Hello everyone, Hyper here. And in today's video, I wanted to log on to the 9.1 PTR and take a look at everything that's being changed with the DK. In this video, I will focus on DK specific things and then the next one we'll talk about the covenants. So first off, um, if you head over to Wowhead, I have the link to the post in the description below. There's a list of all the changes. <clears throat> so for blood, not much is changing. Uh, this update is not an actual change to the spec. It's just a tooltip update, so nothing should be different. Then moving on to Frost, this is where our only PvP talent change comes from. Um, the previous aura um, of Heartstop aura got changed to Shroud of Winter. So now instead of decreasing the cooldown recovery rate of abilities, Enemies within 8 yards of you become shrouded in winter, reducing their range of their spells and abilities by 30%. So if you're standing next to a mage and he's trying to cast Polymorph, the range of that Polymorph is going to be 30% lower. This is strictly worse than Hardstop Aura, um, and its only niche uses are against caster comps that chain CC your healer. So if you think about like Mage Warlock, um, your healer is going to have an easier time kind of staying out of their range because they'll be able to heal you, but the target you're hitting is not going to be able to reach them with CC. Um, but at the same time, it is only an 8-yard radius, so against two casters, you're only going to be able to keep this up on one person. And against melee, I don't think this is going to do anything in particular. So overall, it's definitely a nerf to the Frosty King PvP, but we'll see how, how good this talent actually is. Um, then moving down to the new legendary powers. So there's a new covenant specific one for each of the covenants. For Necrolord, we get Abominations, Frenzy. The duration of your Abom limb is increased by four seconds and the frequency grants its increased effect. Uh, so this is different for all three specs. It's like Bone Shield, the Runic Corruption and the Rhyme procs by 2 seconds. Additionally, enemies pulled by a bomb limb take 10% increased damage from you for 12 seconds. So this one overall fairly mediocre. I, I don't think it's better than any of the legendaries that we have right now. So if you had to make the choice between this or or you know FM or Deadliest Coil. Um, or for Frost, Coltira's Rage, name any of the legendaries, I don't think this is better. Um, the one way it could perceivably be better is if the 10% increased damage procs on enemies that are immune to being gripped, so bosses. Uh, normally effects like this actually only work on things that you can grip. So depending on how that actually works, in practice, it might be a good legendary or it might be fairly mediocre. Um, and this one you can craft in the wrist and hands slots, which again, not great compared to like, you know, legs or chest. Next we have for Kyrian, final sentence. When Shackled the Unworthy spreads, instantly gain a rune and your damage is increased by 2 seconds or by 2%, stacking up to 10% for 10 seconds. And this is head and shoulders. So this one is a little bit better, but again, single target, it has no value because your shackle will never spread. On AoE, the other covenants are just better than Kyrian. <laughs> so it's kind of weird seeing a legendary made to interact with the AoE part of shackle, whereas shackle is largely seen as a single target covenant or single target covenant ability. So this one, again, fairly mediocre, I don't think it's going to be uh, too exciting. Then we have um, Insatiable Hunger. When Swarming Mist ends, it deals a percentage of your attack power as shadow damage to 5 nearby enemies, healing you for 25% of the damage dealt. The damage is increased by 2% for every 1 runic power spent while Swarming Mist was active. So as soon as this got released, I started getting messages, this is a Frost DK Breath of Sindragosa Legendary. Yes, in practice, that is that seems to be what it was designed for. With Obliteration, you don't spend that much runic power. Breath of Sindragosa is definitely where you, you will get the most damage out of this Legendary. But keep in mind that Swarming Mist is only up for a pretty limited duration, so it's not like your entire Breath of Sindragosa 
um, is affected by this. Also keep in mind that depending on how the legendaries play out, if we're able to equip multiple, then it might be good. But even in that case, you are going to give up duration on your Breath of Syndragosa in favor of burst AoE damage. So if you're equipping this legendary, you're making the choice of not using Kul'Tiras or Rage. And either of those choices means that you're not going to generate enough runic power to actually keep your Breath up for a fairly long duration. Um, and from previous uh, experiences, we know that longer Breath of Syndragosa is not necessarily always better. Um, a lot of times in a, you can pack more damage into a shorter window. However, this legendary is, is kind of like on the cusp in my eyes. I'm not entirely sure until I test it out. But it's on the cusp of like being decent um, on AoE. But you know, for anything that's single target or two targets, three targets even maybe, you're probably not going to want to use this. Um, and then again, you run into those diminishing return past five targets. So it's kind of a weird one just because it's target capped. Maybe if it wasn't target capped, um, it would definitely see some play on AoE. But currently, this is kind of the most exciting one. But at the same time, I'm not exactly sure how I feel about it yet. Then for Night Fae, we have the strength gained from Death's Dew is increased by 1% and persists for 2 seconds longer. Uh, while standing within your Death's Dew, your runic power generation is increased by 20%. This one... Either a Frost DK one with Breath of Syndragosa, obviously you generate more runic power, you're able to keep Breath up longer, and this do has a fairly good uptime. Um, it's not like, you know, Insatiable Hunger where Swarming Mist is only up once every minute. This do you have like 90% or 80% uptime, if I remember correctly. Um, so this might actually be a decent legendary for Frost. And for blood, um, so for blood DK, increasing your RP gen means that you you have more survivability, more death strikes, and you also do more damage. Um, the strength gained is increased. I'm not sure if it's 1% per stack or just 1% in general. I assume it's 1% per stack of death's due, in which case it's pretty good. Um, at that point, it's almost like the old death's due from uh, beta testing. Um, the one issue with this, of course, is that anytime you have to move out of it, you kind of lose out on some uptime. So for Frost, maybe it's not the most ideal. For Blood DK, however, where you're proccing extra death and decays, um, and you have essentially 100% uptime on deaths due, I can definitely see this legendary being pretty um, significant and pretty strong. Before we cover all the soul binds in a future video, I wanted to just point out real quick what my initial impressions are about the kind of strong versus weak soul binds. So one big thing that I was surprised by is that Theotar, um, which is kind of the go-to soul bind for uh, Ventir on Holy DK, the last row is super weird. Um, so once per day, you can speak with Theotar and Sinfall to obtain the Mad Duke's T, which increases your primary stat by 3% or your haste by 3%, or your crit by 3%, or your versatility by 3% for one hour. So you only get the last row bonus for one hour every single day. That makes Theotar, in my eyes, significantly weaker. Um, whereas Nadja, her last row, whenever your haste effect from Euphoria runs out, you gain 10 seconds of 20% crit or 20% versatility. Um, and this is usually going to be crit um, for Unholy and for Frost. So even though Nadia is like arguably weaker just because it takes that haste buff from Euphoria just like ramps up over time, it's not like you can proc it on pull, um, this effect might make Nadia stronger. And then kind of the same happened with the Necrolord Covenant where Ameni was like the go-to for pretty much both Frost and um, Unholy for progression. The last row is very weird. Um, so Fleshcraft covers you in three postules per one second channeled. Taking damage or being healed pops a postule, dealing damage uh, to nearby enemies and healing nearby allies split between them. So... 
it's like it's okay but it's nothing exciting whereas bonesmith Hymir, which you know i just had a video about which one's better mne or Hymir. i think these changes with 9.1 definitely push our covenant situation and our soulbind situation in favor of the bonesmith um so one of the traits that you get is that while an enemy is above 90 percent health you gain 200 mastery um for five seconds and this stacks up to five five times so if you hit five enemies you get five times 200 mastery um also you can't proc this more than every 10 seconds so it means that in the 90 to 100 burn you will have 50 percent uptime on this mastery buff however the 90 to 50 per, or the 100 to 90 percent burn is usually the fastest part of a fight because that's where you bloodlust that's where everyone has cooldowns so it's not going to be a huge thing um, on AoE. However, whenever like new ads spawn and you're able to proc some mastery every time you have to swap to a new target, it is a fairly nice little quality of life improvement and also DPS improvement. Um, then the other part of Bonesmith, which is also pretty cool, is that whenever you damage an enemy that's below 35% health, you deal 3% more damage. Um, currently, from what I read, this does not apply to pets, um, guardians, so that makes it a lot worse. In reality, it's going to be a lot less than 3%, but we're not entirely sure yet if that is working as intended or if it's supposed to apply to all of your abilities, all your pets and your uh, minions' abilities. So we'll see how that plays out, but for me, Bonesmith just gained... A huge advantage over a many for progression um and this is not even mentioning the fact that with bonesmith you can now use double potency which for unholy a big part of why bonesmith was seen as worse on single target by some players was that you just couldn't have the apocalypse cdr conduit so with bonesmith now having double uh, potency slots it might become the go-to soulbind for progression Thanks for watching this video. Let me know in the comment section below what are you most excited about for patch 9.1. Are you excited about these DK changes? Um, to be fair, we haven't really gotten that many that are DK specific. I know a lot of the other classes got hard nerfed. Um, DK seems to remain fairly untouched. A big surprise to me was that they didn't change AMZ at all after seeing how impactful it was in the last ra uh, race to world first. Um, and just mythic progression in general. AMZ is absolutely insane. I was absolutely expecting either a nerf on the percent of magic damage you negate or on the cooldown of it, but I'm very glad that it remains untouched. Again, thanks for watching this video, and I'll see you on the next one. Bye-bye.